Hey yo, Antonio. In the last episode, we hopped into the shoes of a nearsighted individual. It was a unique learning experience even for myself, as I have the complete opposite of nearsightedness, which is farsightedness, or hyperopia. Today we'll be looking at something different, which is astigmatism. But what exactly is astigmatism? Simply put, it is the irregularity in the shape of the eyeball. That is to say that the eyeball is not completely round, but rather stretched out to one side. The difference in curvature between the vertical and horizontal axes do not allow the light to focus evenly. And this can stem from a combination of genetics and your environment. And it is believed that long-term irritation to the eye, such as a misdirected eyelash or excessive eye rubbing can make astigmatism worse. There are also different types of astigmatism too. If the cornea happens to be longer horizontally, then we have what is known as with the rule astigmatism. If it's longer vertically, we have against the rule astigmatism. And if it's longer diagonally, it is considered oblique astigmatism. And you'll see in a minute why this matters. But let's get right into it. We'll start with a mild case of astigmatism at one diopter and progressively make our way up to two, three, and even five diopters. For each power, I'll demonstrate what it would be like to have with the rule, against the rule, and oblique astigmatism. Our first example is the back of this bottle. What you are seeing now is vision without astigmatism. You can see that the words on the bottle are easily legible. Now let's introduce some astigmatism. This is the vision of an individual who has about one diopter of with the rule astigmatism. Compared to the first clip, we can see that the words are stretched out vertically. The vision is not terrible, but it isn't perfect either. How does it compare to against the rule astigmatism? This time, the words are stretched out horizontally. From this example, I think it's safe to say that one diopter astigmatism is not entirely debilitating, regardless of what type it is. Moving on to two diopters. We're now looking at two diopters of with the rule astigmatism, and I can start to see some difficulty in being able to read this properly. This sort of vision is quite familiar to me, as this is close to the two diopters of astigmatism that I have in my left eye. But seeing this now, I'm really glad that I have with the rule astigmatism than anything else, as I personally think it is the easiest to read out of the three different types. Moving on to three diopters. It has now reached a point where it is very uncomfortable to read these words. And just like before, having against the rule an oblique astigmatism tends to be the most difficult. At this point, attempting to read this is all guesswork. But let me know what you think of this level of vision in the comments below. Do you think you'd be able to read comfortably with three diopters of astigmatism? Moving on to five diopters. Whenever I see someone with five diopters of astigmatism in the clinic, I start to worry about the likelihood of keratoconus, which is when the cornea bulges out like a cone. And surprisingly, it is what Stephen Curry from the Golden State Warriors has been diagnosed with. Having this level of vision and being the greatest shooter of all time is just respectful. Like before, with the rule astigmatism tends to be the easiest to read than the rest, Almost to the point where if I had to choose, I would choose 5 diopters of with the rule than 3 diopters of against the rule astigmatism. For the next example, we're out on the tennis courts and it appears that we're on court 19. I'm really glad that I was able to capture both the numbers alongside my friend here because when playing sport, being able to read the scores while being able to see your opponent at the same time becomes really important. I have now introduced one diopter of astigmatism, and just like before, it does not seem to impact the vision significantly. The 19 in the distance is still legible, so I don't think many one diopter astigmats would have major issues seeing the score. Moving on to two diopters. We can now start to see some difficulty in reading numbers, especially when we compare between the three types. Again, I personally find with the rule astigmatism to be the easiest, and if you agree with me, then feel free to drop a like on this video so that I know I'm not the only one. 
Moving on to three diopters. Like with the bottle example, three diopters tends to be the critical point at which letters and numbers become extremely difficult to read. But pay attention to the tennis court itself. Although the lines do appear more blurry, I don't think the sport would be unplayable. The boundaries are still recognizable, and if you're someone who has a lot of experience playing tennis, then this shouldn't be impossible to play. Moving on to five diopters. At this level of vision, I don't think many things would be enjoyable, even for professionals. Luckily nowadays, there are soft conventional monthly contact lenses that can correct up to 5.75 diopters of astigmatism, such as the Biofinity XR Toric. But getting the prescription right for these can become really tricky, so careful fine-tuning adjustments may be needed to make it work right. Or there is the option of rigid gas permeable lenses that provide great vision, but perhaps may not be as convenient as soft contact lenses. All of this astigmatism talk has made me want to show you this picture right here. The streaking of light at nighttime is one of the most classic signs of astigmatism. And for the longest time for some reason, I fully thought everyone saw this in the evening. The footage you're seeing now is the vision you would see if you didn't have astigmatism. Notice how the streaking of light is uniform across all the different axes. As soon as I start to introduce astigmatism, you can see that one distinct streak stands out. Comparing the different types of astigmatism shows that the streak is always the most obvious perpendicular to the flattest meridian of the cornea. That is to say that with the rule astigmats, we'll see the streak stretch vertically and vice versa. Hopefully the three cases that I've shown you today have given you a better understanding of what astigmatism is and how it changes our perception. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.